Welcome to Coding Cohen's, where together we are going to explore the world of software, get better jobs, and change the world. Uh, my name's Ian Carroll. I'm a software developer. Uh, I do many other things besides that. Um, and uh, I was also mentioned, it's also mentioned that I should feature these lovely barrels back here um, as something else that I do as a hobby. In any case, uh, today uh, I have a guest. Uh, my guest today is Eric Smith. Um, Eric is uh, a software developer uh, and he works at the 8th Light Software Consultancy. He's been there since the Eisenhower administration, so he says. Um, he may be a time traveler, but I don't know. And any, one thing I do know is that he has a, time, he has a, um, a show on Twitch as well um, at twitch.tv slash Peyton Rules. Uh, and he streams on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, Eric, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey. Thanks. That's a very nice intro. <laughs> so, um, uh, you've been doing this for a while. You've been a software developer for a while. Uh, yeah, for money? Um, sure. Uh, for 21 years now, 22, somewhere wow. in there. Okay, cool. So, you've been, yeah. you've been, it's been a while. Um, it, it's been a long time, but only like the last two years count. That so. technically <laughs> means that you, you've been a software developer since the last century. Well, that's, I hadn't felt really old yet today, so... Uh, let me just, yeah. <laughs> Thanks just, for that. Just put that in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, um, what got you into software? Um... To be honest, my dad was a my dad worked at um, Digital Equipment Corporation, which no longer exists. <laughs> okay. Um, but at one time was the second biggest computer company in the world behind IBM. Uh, so, uh, if you have, like, if you have any um, well viewers that have been at this for a really long time and they've heard of the PDP eleven or things like that, that's the stuff that digital made. So I, I always I don't even know what a PDP eleven is. <laughs> it's basically a dump terminal. Okay. Um, it's got a little more to it, and I, I might not even have gotten the number on right. But we always had computers in my house. So like when I was six or seven, my dad got me a Texas Instruments computer, which had little games that would like let you do math. Mm -hmm. um, but I noticed one day that if you don't put a cartridge in, you could type, and it things happened not much yeah. and i was always asking my dad like what is in this giant manual that came with it so it, it programmed basic is what it did oh, okay um and in retrospect I, I don't know if spec i don't know if i should thank or blame my father for putting me into this career but um between buying me that and then the fact that he would have the patience with me because since i couldn't touch type trying to type in the programs that were in the book was awful so i would make him sit next to me and read the programs all i did you know this kind of thing. Wow. Type them in. That's not too different than how I work right now, though. <laughs> this is so weird. My dad's never even mentioned you. <laughs> yeah. He's retired in Florida. What are you what's what I'm trying to say is that I'm actually the time traveler. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, although I haven't learned a thing. All I did was just time travel into the future, and now I'm really confused. Oh. Yeah, it's it's true. We have a game show host as president, but he's going away soon. I know you're confused by this. Oh, uh, well, well, yes, that that is definitely not what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, other things I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, uh, what's what, what's what's with all these electric cars and and there's no flying cars. Why aren't there any? There's flying no flying cars. cars. Wait, you've seen the way people drive. Do we really want flying cars? Good point. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason we don't have flying cars. This is the reason we can't have nice things. No, some people want flying cars, other people want self-driving cars. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, neither. Maybe we should just have more bicycles. That would bicycles. be fine. Huh? Yeah, like the Wright brothers had. Yeah, with the giant wheel in the front, and the tiny one in the back. Yeah. Uh, Cody Bushy says, "Hey, Eric Smith." Hello. <laughs> um, so... I cannot see the chat, so. That's okay. That's, that's... I'll. I'll I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I <laughs> That's new for me from a stream. It's over here. I can, I can oh. look at the chat. That's where my phone yeah. is. Yeah, you, you don't see it? It's right there. 
<laughs> no, just that's just the leave button. Should I click it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Eric, uh, you have so you work in software professionally. You've been doing it for two decades. Yep. And um, you decide to spend your free time on a stream online where you program without getting paid for it. I got a subscriber now. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Hey. I mean, that, that two bucks Oh yeah. next month, that's going to be four, and I'll be able to buy a coffee with that. Oh, that's nice. That is really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's... It's weird when you put it that way. I mean, one of the funny things though about like professional software development, right? Is like mm -hmm. they have we have this image that software developers, you know, just sit like this and code all day, and you know, they're pro wait, wait, I can put on my hoodie and do it right, but like I should have a way bigger beard that I haven't trimmed since well, the beginning of COVID at least. Yeah, which uh, fairness, the Linux ethic is ago. how old that beard is, right? <laughs> right. Um, but a lot of times our day-to-day -day work, you, you don't spend eight hours coding. You spend two hours in meetings. You spend a few more hours trying to track down what it is you're supposed to do. You write documentation. And like, that doesn't mean our job isn't fun sometimes. And sometimes you do like really dig in and do stuff. But when you program on the side, you get to feel like I get to code whatever the hell I want. And I get to deliver it whenever the hell I want or don't. It doesn't matter. That's true. I don't, <laughs> like, I, oh, I didn't finish? Who cares? Something, some other new shiny object came in. Right. So, I mean, there's that. And then, you know, the other half is just sort of, uh, the, the field is constantly changing, right? Like, I've been at it for two decades, and I don't do most of the stuff I did 10 years ago. Right. You know, and, and a lot of people don't care. I mean, that doesn't mean it's not relevant. Actually, I'd probably argue that it's more relevant than a lot of, say, you know, a lot of business people might think who think they can just staff their company with people that have all been at it for two years and be fine but or they ask or, for or five less. they ask for 10 years of rust experience right or you know 25 of ruby on rails plus 10 years of rust experience if you can uh, have both of those um yeah uh which neither of those <laughs> languages uh or frameworks existed that, that long ago <laughs> yeah yeah i saw the creator of rails at a conference once joke about uh, he showed during his keynote speech uh, a job ad and it needed more Rails experience than existed. And he said, I know we've made it. They need developers who have more Rails experience than me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so, I mean, you kind of do have to keep up to date. You do, yeah. Um, it's so, like, one thing I've heard uh, it said is that, like, oh, well, that's professional because it's like a doctor. You expect a doctor to keep up to date and to um, continue learning about medicine outside of the hours that they're practicing and billing, right? Mm. But you yeah. also don't usually expect a doctor to be, um, uh, you know, tinkering with medicine. Um, <laughs> When he's not working on things that people are paying for. <laughs> I mean, don't we make horror movies about that? Isn't that essentially <laughs> what Frankenstein is about? <laughs> right. Look, there's a doctor tinkering with medicine on the side. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you know after down a, the village. Yeah. Um, and you don't really hear about that with accountants or, you know, other kinds of, you know, professionals, uh, lawyers, you know. I guess there is such a thing as a pro bono assignment you get with lawyers, right? Yeah, I right. suppose. I mean, there's people who'd... I mean, I have real mixed feelings about some of that stuff because there's a lot of people that will go out to like um, to say, you know, oh, you owe 40 hours to your job and 20 hours to just learning your profession. Right. And I, most people don't just work 40 hours, so you've already lost the first half. Right. And I don't know that you have the other 20 hours for real. Lots of people... You know, they have different ambitions than say I do, right? They want, they, they stay at a, a one, right? Like I'm a consultant, so I go from gig to gig. So I have to know a breadth of stuff. Right. Some people are like, yeah, I've been at the same company working on the same family of products for 20 years. And I'm really, really good at those. And that's, they're not going home and writing features for their company. No. You know, they go and it doesn't really help them to branch out in that case either because no. everything that they need to know is what the company has already written. Right. The value there is that you know what 
the, all the details of the domain, not that you know a bunch of other different skills. Right. Um, there is a job security yeah. thing going on there, uh, but also a, a potential liability as far as your, your career stability. Because if your job goes away, you are left in the lurch because you haven't learned no. anything besides the thing that no longer exists or they don't need you to do that anymore. <laughs> there is there is a risk there. That's yeah. that's definitely true. I don't think it's necessarily as big. I, I feel like, yeah, I've, I mean, still like I worked, um, so I, when, before I worked at 8th Light, I worked at big cubicle farm company. Um, and the, a bunch of the, I still know some of the people there and they get very concerned. Like for some of them to be like, oh, the job market's bad right now, which is kind of true right now because of COVID. But it, it wasn't is. true for all of the last 20 years. And no matter when you talk to them, they'll say it. Um, <laughs> right. right. Like, that's not the job market being bad. That's your, you're just kind of frightened. And it's kind of okay, but like, you're not going to get past it if you don't admit to yourself, I'm a little frightened and I'm going to get past that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and also, it's, I, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a first world problem, I, I would say. Um, it is a little bit of a because, first world problem. Like, I mean, sir, like, let me tell you about jobs that have a hard time finding employment in the middle of a pandemic. You know, one of them mm -hmm. is not developing software that allows people to talk remotely. Yeah, <laughs> it's, there's definitely like, and you know, the first world problem even of like, well, I'm not super happy at this job that will never put my physical health in any real danger that will pay me quite well that will make yeah. sure i have a house and a home for my family and everything else like could be a lot worse yeah it definitely <laughs> could be um but uh um you know uh it does make me think a little bit about creative jobs um mm -hmm. which usually creative jobs don't actually make any money but <laughs> um an actor for example um, might uh, work once, you know, yeah. like for, for have a job for like two weeks and then the rest of the time they don't have a job. They're trying to find jobs or they're trying to develop more skills so that they can get the next job. Um, and, you know, if they're really an artist or, you know, for any kind of artist at all, you know, most of the work that they do is not being paid for, right? Yeah, um, and many of them, aside from, you know, the super famous ones, are True. not getting paid all that much even when they do get paid. True, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that maybe software development has more to do with uh, the careers in the arts than it does with the careers in uh, the traditional paid professions. And it sounds like a person who does a coding show on an improv channel. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, which by the way, uh, you showed me just before the stream. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you want me to show it again? Or? Yeah, show it again. <laughs> yeah, this is my. This is partly my. This is actually from. I got this. Well, no, I, that's not true. I finished it while I was working at Eighth Place. This is my second city writing program, going all the way through their training, setup. So we wrote. And actually, I still got the brochure for the show. On the wall, too. Ah! Almost reach. Hold on. Oh, I can reach that one easier, actually. Hey, Brian. Uh, Brian just jump, jump, jumped into the channel, <laughs> so. Brian. Yeah, so I also have this, which is the actual show. Let's see if I can line this up that we co-wrote. My uh, name's in there. Ah, nice. Yeah, because we did all our uh, classes. We're in a room with a big old couch, so we dubbed ourselves the Couch of Comedy. Nice. <laughs> yep. Oh, and I got the and credit here, and it's definitely not because Smith is alphabetically last. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good thing. Always good to have a name with, with a last name that is either the first letter of the alphabet or the last. That <laughs> it's not that far down. It's only Smith. <laughs> I'm not usually the bottom. I got a, got a little lucky that time. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, your point about the creative is, is partly there. I mean, so I usually when I work on hobby stuff, it's all game dev. Um, because that's part of what got me into this anyway. Game development. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and so that's a little bit of a, it's, it's the kind of thing where I don't get to necessarily do that at the day job. Yeah. Um, for a plethora of reasons, although my first job out of college was actually at a game company. How'd that go? Um, well, so there's a scene in when Harry met Sally, 
where um, at the very beginning where Billy Crust Crystal, who I guess is Harry, <laughs> yes, <laughs> is telling his best friend uh -huh. um, how his wife informed him that she thinks she wants to leave him. And then movers showed up and he's like, my, wait, you had to make this appointment two weeks ago. The movers knew my marriage was over before I did. <laughs> So one day we were all working and the owner showed up with movers. It's a color. So the movers knew two weeks ago before I did, and they took it cross country. So they knew it at least two weeks before. I did. Oh I my goodness! Over. <laughs> well, um, but I, yeah, I worked at a small game company because that was what like I wanted to do. Right. Um, I was, I was playing a. Like I had decided actually in high school for a while, I was like, I want to be a sports journalist and I want to cover like the bears and bulls and cubs. You, yeah. And one you day kinda, it's kicking around have in my that head going, to you too. I've, it's kicking around in my head one day going, you know, you'd have to go to journalism school and there's no guarantee that you'd get to do sports or your teams. Right. Hmm. <laughs> you yeah. Know, do you want to look work on the farm beat in Omaha? Right. <laughs> And, you know, no, I don't. But right. I was thinking this and I was playing this really, I kind of remember it. It was really weird, but like I was playing this game that looked really cool in the box and was terrible when I played it called Hell Cab. That was like one of the early CD-ROM full motion video games. Okay. And you literally got to the top of the Empire State Building and then the game would crash. <laughs> that was the game. And I was like, wait, I play these all day long. This is what I should do. And now i write rust code in the morning and go code during the day and apparently talk to you at night now <laughs> yeah every once That's in a while <laughs> uh it's good to have you on the show uh by the way uh brian porter is saying def not the socks though no 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 yeah what if uh, my first job had been like you have to go cover the packers and be like this awful team <laughs> it'd be the green bay herald or whatever green bay's newspaper was actually i just assume it's a drunk guy at a bar who tells everyone the score it just from like I, i'm i've been listening to a lot of harry potter lately and you know i've got the sweater on right now um oh is that that's hogwarts okay. yeah it is it's yeah. hogwarts ah. um but uh, it just reminds me of like the, uh, the the announcing that they have for Quidditch that like you know someone who just is not into into the sports at all or just doesn't or like is clearly biased. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 what it would be. Yeah. So the Packers um, who clearly cheated to beat the Bears again. <laughs> and another flagrant example of them cheating and the refs <laughs> looking the other way. <laughs> the whole game. That's why it was forty-one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not because of any skill that they had. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look at no. these brave, noble people fighting these guys. <laughs> it's it's actually funny that the game thing came up again, though, because I also have one other cool thing in my background, which is this. So this is actually the game that we shipped that I worked on. Jet no. Fighter Four, Fortress yeah, America. I worked on... Yeah, they hired me to do level design, and then at first they didn't like the way I did level design. Um... Because I was like right out of college. Of course, I wasn't very good at it. That looks like it's um, um it's but but that's uh that's that's using polygons. Uh, it's it's not a yeah. It was 2D. a 3D game. It's a 3D game. <laughs> um, I wrote the uh, force feedback stuff for the joystick. So if you're playing video games in 2000 and the force feedback on that joystick didn't work, sorry, oh. I can't fix it now. <laughs> um, and I wrote a uh, I wrote the mission editor and I wrote some of the missions. I got to blow up the Green Golden Gate Bridge. I called that. Because it all took place over San Francisco because that was all they could afford for terrain. So it was the only thing that made sense. <laughs> like, like the, but it didn't make any, like the US having air power in San Francisco, why? What? We would be somewhere else. But also like, if that was the case, you'd be doing like air power in, I don't know, the Persian Gulf. And I kind of imagine that is it's sand and more sand and it's there's an ocean. Not, and again. not an interesting level. No. Yeah. Uh, but you're, like, on your stream right now, you're doing things with uh, game development a little bit, right? You talked about an, an Yeah, right now Gundam. I'm actually... Yeah, so I, instead of just showing you my office, I should probably actually talk about what I'm doing on my stream. Sure, so, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, right now I'm using um, a game engine called... They usually pronounce it Godot. Is it Godot? 
I think it should be pronounced Gado. That's how <laughs> um, Samuel Beckett pronounced it. Right. I went and actually watched a version of the play just to say I was saying it right, but everybody who uses it pronounces it Gado. Yes. Um, I also wouldn't name anything Gado or Gado if I wanted to release ever because <laughs> of the nature of the play. Um, right. Um, it's like the guys who invented Kafka. I was like, do you realize what you just named this thing? <laughs> Why did you do All that? Either it's a giant, giant spider. Yeah, either a <laughs> giant cockroach or <laughs> a it's cockroach, a story about it. like getting like lost in forms and never being able to get anywhere. Right. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why? Um but uh so I I I already don't like I just started doing it cuz there was only I, I started watching streams during the day. Mm -hmm. um usually like background noise um and i wanted to learn rust for a while so i think i don't know sometime maybe marchish i'd gone through the book and i have this habit of whenever i learn a new language i end up trying to write a space invaders clone which i haven't tried to do yet um because i know for my f sharp space invaders clone and my go space invaders clone it's hard so <laughs> <laughs> because you, there's a there's a really good website that i have bookmarked which details they reverse engineered the original assembler code for from the old game machine wow. and so they have all the timing down for space invaders which if you haven't played space invaders right these aliens slowly move down like this and you shoot them it's one of the first games i played in an atari 2600 um i'm going burr, 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 burr. yeah um and it's funny reading about it because so much of the stuff like is specific to the hardware as to why it works. So like in space invaders, as you shoot more space invaders, the space, in the invaders themselves go faster. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily deliberate per se. That is because the game processes faster when there's less aliens on screen. So they move quicker. So if a that's person a nowadays wrote that, you'd say it's a bug. You should fix yes. your time step is what you're supposed to do like but that's but they, just a happy they accident they, they, it, and they're like this just makes it harder i like that <laughs> like i like it they're gonna have to punch in more quarters <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing <laughs> that's i mean um, that's that's definitely using um uh the limitations of of the computer uh as uh a yeah it's turning a bug into a feature yeah and so um so a game loop always has essentially a while true, do all the stuff, draw the screen. Um, and a properly done one will see what it will only do the stuff at a fixed time step. It'll basically stop. It'll essentially sleep for a teensy amount and do it the next one. Right. Um, but the original so one didn't have that time step. Didn't right? have it in. <laughs> no. So, this, so this, are, this, you are you trying to reproduce the same way in which it was produced where well that's just it you then have to actually program the thing that happened on accident on the heart firmware of the machine amongst the many other stuff like if you watch the game like how often do they move their legs back and forth oh well that's two bitmaps but for them that was like light these registers up wow <laughs> so i probably will at some point write a port of space of space invaders on I, I like I'm no good at modern video games, so they're, they're they're. I have five kids. There's just too much time you have to invest in most of them. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's a lot of time. But it's yeah, it's like watching a, reading a novel. Fortunately, napping right now. Or you know, uh, watching through all of the extended editions for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I can't get my daughter to even get through the first one. I thought she'd like them. She loves Harry Potter. God, movies are the new books now. Ah. <laughs> They're going to be, like, forcing kids to watch movies in the future. They're going to be like, why? Can't we just play the video game? <laughs> Can't they do the 3D simulation where I'm Frodo and throw the ring myself? Or I don't. That's the game. <laughs> so uh, you've got some code that you want to show us, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, right. let's dive this into this. That's coding thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's I just... think it's about time that we, yeah. we, we take a look at that. Ooh, oh, there's back. more of me. Oh, it says that you've disabled screen sharing. Oh, shoot. That's that's my bad. Uh, now you should be able to. You'll never make it as a producer in this town. Uh, all right. Let's do the whole thing. And now there's going to be even more and more of you. Oh, my God. There's all kinds of more of you. <laughs> yeah. Give me a second here. There we go. 
Well, it didn't help that I still had the web browser open that had Outpost. There we are. Um, yeah, so what I'm actually streaming now, um, maybe I'll start here, start at the high level, uh, is I'm using this um, framework called Godot to make, or Gado. Uh, I shouldn't okay. say framework. This engine to make a app instead of a game. Okay. Um, I have this idea, and I'm kicking it around for a few years now, that we have all these problems when we try to make, particularly mobile apps, with things like resolutions and frameworks and then making them look nice, not look like... Like, if you make um, an iOS app and it, you don't care that it looks just like mail, then you can use their frameworks and it will work really well. But when you try to make like a lot of professional apps, you'll have to get a designer and they'll immediately redraw everything. Um, and if you try to do it, say, in a responsive web app, well, that's a lot of work to make everything respond. Right. But in my head, I'm like, oh, game developers have already solved this. They already do this. If I play a game, uh, it's going to look right at my phone and it's going to have like a clear, clean menu system that I'm just going to be able to figure out, right? There's no directions. There's no Correct. Googling. It's push the buttons. You go back and forth, right? Yeah, it's so I have this idea that we could make apps in game engines and they might come out even better than before. Um, huh. However, I have no eye for design. So, <laughs> 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 um, so I've, I've experimented with this before. And what I decided to do this time is I ma started making an iOS app in the Gato game engine with Rust. Rust, um, which is a yeah, programming Rust language. It's one that I've, I, I like and I don't know too much about, but I, I want to know more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have this other thing that I like to do where if I'm making, if I'm trying to learn stuff, I make my project as small as possible Okay. and throw as much of the kitchen sink at it. Um, okay. So Gato has its own programming language in it called GDScript, which looks a lot like Python. Real easy to learn, re works really well. Not, Not Rust, Because I have no interest in learning GDScript. It does nothing for me at my day job. Right. Uh, um, so I'm using Rust via a plugin called GD Native, um, which lets you write code that compiles to machine code instead of the GD native scripting language, which I don't have any examples of this GD native oh, okay. scripting language. So like, just to clarify this, normally Gado would only write in its own GD script, which is Gado script. It's just going to yeah. be, they're trying to do something with Python and sounding it a little bit it's like a JavaScript. It's very Python-esque. Yeah. Yeah. If I had an example handy and I don't, it looks a lot but, like Python. It's but very But it's like it's Python. its own proprietary language that you're never going to use anywhere else, so why learn it? Instead, right. what you're doing is you're taking a language that is used in other places, and then there's a plugin for it. And what it's doing is, is it's taking this language, translating it into the language that both it and GDScript use, and it's running it straight like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's close enough, um, because what's, what, it, what GDScript, or what GD Native was originally built for was for C and C++ developers. So in game development, the most common languages are C and C++, right. which unlike many, many production languages these days, compile down to machine code. Um, right. Many machine code being like, something that's like bare bones right against the metal. Um, exactly. It is the language of the computer itself. It is not very friendly to use. Well, it's not even like essentially readable by humans. Right. Um, so unlike, like say JavaScript is an interpreted language. You run a JavaScript engine, which looks at the actual text you typed. And yes. at that moment, L looks at this line, parses it, it, that turns line, it runs into it. something it can understand and does things. Yeah. Um, C sharp and JavaScript for, or C sharp and Java, for instance, which are also sometimes used in game development compiled mm -hmm. to a kind of bytecode, an intermediate language. Right. Um, they, and then they run on a runtime called either .NET or the Java runtime. Right. Um, C and C++ both go right to machine code. So does Rust. Um, OK. And so <laughs> what that means is you can use C and C++ with Gato, and you can use Rust with Gato. Huh. Now, interestingly, 
I mentioned, so if I explain what the app is, it might make more sense, but this app that I dubbed Capture because I was bad at naming is just a little to-do app where after you log in, and I'll get to the weirdness in the login uh, in one second, or don't let me forget, you go to, where's the other scene? Why am I blind? Is it this one? Yeah. You go here and all this does is give you things to remember stuff. Mm -hmm. Hence the elephant. They never forget. Right. Uh, so I can actually run, let's, let's see if I built it recently. So I can actually run this here. Um, and I log in and if I type some text and I hit okay, it'll save. Now, that's what I might have meant by if I want to learn a bunch of learn a bunch of stuff, I throw a bunch of things at the kitchen sink at a small project. So this project is tiny. I could remember everything in memory. I could save it to a file. Right. So you don't need like to use locally. it locally. No, no mucking about with the database right now right. or doing other kinds of. Right. I could do that, but this is a Franken project. So that's not even close to what I do. Right. <laughs> what instead I do is I actually have all of my to dos in a thing that's in Emacs called org mode. Um, and I take this and I write it to a file that I can use in org mode. Okay. But <laughs> I can't write that locally because it'd be running on my phone. I store all of the stuff I have in org mode in GitLab, which is a source code repository right. tool. If you've heard of GitHub, GitLab is a lot like it. GitLab is another one. Uh, is another like, one. It's a competitor, really. Yeah, uh, um, but it's but they both use Git. Uh, yes, as they both use Git under the hood. Right. And I only use GitLab for this project because at the time GitLab offered free private repositories and GitHub didn't. GitHub probably would now, or uh, does now. So I probably would have used GitHub, but oh well. I already started on GitLab. All my stuff's in there. It's perfectly good. There's um. Yeah, the it's interface like, is a little different. I mean, it's always good that there's a couple of competitors. You don't want just one company well, running every single thing online. That can be troublesome. Yeah, so GitLab being, um, yeah, so GitLab offering free private repositories is why GitHub does it. Right. right. So I, this is all my to-dos, right? Like the reason I haven't opened up and shown you org mode is because I didn't prepare that in advance. So I could very well show you things like, I don't want to show an audience of, well, I can't see chat or viewership. I'm going to assume millions. Oh, yes, um, definitely millions of people, people are watching this. Right, like all my personal stuff. You know, The whole world doesn't need to see my Christmas list and right. God knows what else. And a number of them are really elite hackers too. True, and, true. And well, you already said Porter yeah. was there, so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so the way this actually works is when I click login, this actually will make me log in to GitLab to get my account. Um, I think I don't have <laughs> I don't have Mac Pass open. Uh, I think I'm okay. It should be all asterisks. Should be fine. So this is just this is just my password manager. Yep, all asterisks. Um. So I log in and then, no, I don't want to save and I'll have to use two-factor auth. Um, and now when I come back to my app, it's on my remember me stuff. Okay. So, so you have to log in to your GitLab in order for it to work because yes. it's referencing the actual logged in thing. Yeah, it's actually referencing my repository. So it's actually saving and it's gonna, so when I do this, hello there, and I hit check. So that actually made a commit to my repository up on GitLab. What? <laughs> <laughs> through, their, uh, through their REST API. You... So they have a web service that let me do that. And you're you're committing the 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 uh, the the actual user data straight into GitLab every time that you do that. Yep, told you it was a Franken project. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> um, yes. And now if I go to org and we'll look at my inbox. Yep, that's the one. Um, uh, 
let's pull from GitLab. Uh, shucks, I got to merge. Um, uh, oh no, it's just that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And you'll see, boom, there's hello there. You committed so, the actual thing. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I committed so the you actual would... thing. Now, the, the app itself only shows the last couple. That's why you got dashes here. Yeah. So um, you would never actually, you would never do this um, if you were building something else. No, if I was building like a real app for people that like wanted to give me money, this is insane. Right? Or even just to use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the reason like everything has a reason on it because i may actually end up using this at some point so i i don't know if you're familiar at all with the um the process of it's called there's a book called getting things done and there's like a getting things done method for to do's and such mm -hmm. um and in it one of the, the things is you have to be able to trust your to-do lists right so because if you don't you won't scan them which means you'll constantly try to remember stuff. And the whole idea is you want to get things out of your head and onto something you wrote down so you're not stressed. Like right. people get concerned about the list and some of the methods. So that you way throw you a good chunk of it out. It's like you need to get everything out of your head. Right. You and need to remove the fear of forgetting something. So, right. So the way you do that is he has a, a concept called an inbox, which is, look, you can't go like it's here's all the ways I organize my to-do lists. But if every time you need to add something to the to-do list, you have to also organize it, you're not going to do it, right? Because it's going to be, I'm in the car. I just remembered a thing to do. Right. So you instead use this app, which right now would like literally only work for me. Like somewhere in this code base is my hard-coded GitLab repository. Like it's not going to work for other humans. Right. Um, but uh, it would, so the idea is you dump things into what he calls the inbox. So I put it here, it goes into my inbox, and then later, when I go through my actual to-do lists, um, I just parse this inbox, all the random crap I told myself to remember, and then put it in the right lists and mark when I'm gonna do it. Okay, so wait, this means that if you edit it in Emacs right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can add another element to it, commit that, and then we'll see it on the app, right? Yeah, I have to restart the app though, because it doesn't refresh after this screen. Okay, but, that makes sense. But yeah, but yeah, it would totally. <laughs> oh geez. Um, and I actually have. So I mentioned. So let's 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 do a let's do a quick commit here. Um, I can yeah. I can actually do you one better. Oh. So uh, let's. Where am I at? Okay, I gotta go back one directory. Okay. So. I mentioned before when I want to learn something, I make the project really small and then just throw the kitchen sink at it. Right. So here is like, I want to learn some ghetto. I want to learn rust. I want to learn like I'm, but, and if I just did a to-do list, I could right. learn Godot and I would only write it in Godot list and it's got a GD script and it wouldn't be all that useful because it would store it locally. Right. But I'm like, I want to learn how I can make phone apps. I want to learn how to do this in rust. Cause I like the rust programming language, which we haven't even gotten to. <laughs> Not <laughs> yeah. yet. And, and uh, um, the flip side of that is this little auto commit script where I was on a gig that did not let me get to any repositories that were public where I did happen to have my to-do lists. I could go to a private repository. Um, so I made a private repository on GitLab and I wrote this tiny little Python script that all it does is periodically scan this directory and commit it and push it up. So one of these days I'm gonna end up giving a talk with how I replaced Evernote with a Python script that's about 25 lines. Like, it's in here. Eh, maybe it's 30 lines. 33 lines. I'm such a liar. <laughs> and now that I actually have this, I'm going to have to tweak it because it doesn't pull first. I have to do that manually. <laughs> um, anyway, so I did that. And now if I actually, I did, oh, I ran auto commit. So it's already pushed up. And so if I run this again, and I'll have to hit the login again because I haven't implemented Remember Me, but it should happen automatically. Boom. Hello. Hi, Ian. There it oh is. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is Your back end is actually the repository. <laughs> yep. My back end is a Git repository. <laughs> and if I actually look at the log, 
Um, well, uh, that way you're... You you're... should see, look, there you go. Reminder added from Capture App. Uh, well, I mean, the good news about this is that you will, like, have a permanent record of every change that's made on the actual app. I mean, I, if like... I ever really want to get depressed, I have a record of every to-do that I ever failed to do. That's right. <laughs> Going back into, like, the last four and, years. Yeah, it's, it's like a... I mean, this is, you, you've basically implemented a little tiny like a, a, a really weird proto blockchain. For... <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dog is looking extra cute, but I can't. My camera doesn't let me point to her. What the heck did she get into? Uh, Cardin just followed the channel. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. Hey, thank you very much for the follow. Um, yeah, uh, follow our channel. Uh, we have coding shows like this one. Uh, we have uh, other shows like game shows, hangout things. This is a channel where um, art, artists, artistic things and creative things are just put together uh, pell-mell. Um, we give everyone an opportunity. So um, uh, we have a number of improv shows as well that happen here. Uh, the Improvised Generation, which is a uh, improv Star Trek. Um, there's also, uh, speaking of Star Trek, um, uh, there's also Infinite Trek, which is a podcast about Star Trek. We do we do a lot of Star Trek here? Um, yeah. <laughs> there's nerds here. Yeah, there, there are plenty <laughs> of nerds. Yeah, um, there's um, a, a there's a there's a couple of people who just drink whiskey and come on the stream and they talk about whiskey and they drink whiskey. It's called I effing love whiskey. Um, I've yeah. seen the title. I didn't realize that that was what they did. I just thought it was one of those. <laughs> Improv shows always have. No, it's not an improv show. It's, it's literally them sitting names. down and drinking whiskey. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, so, anyway, so, uh, wait, I, so I had this tiny little app, and like, <laughs> and if you want to check it out, you know, I should pitch my show too. You can see me do some more refactoring on it tomorrow morning, um, at seven central. Nice. Uh. So I, I built this, you know, what I call the Franken project because it's all like extra complicated um, by the fact that like I did all these different things. But the point of it is that the next app I want to build, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to take an old video game that I worked on uh, with the team. So we left it out of the bio, but um, because I almost embarrassed to bring it up, but I showed you my important diploma. Uh, which yes. is the second city training center oh, one yeah. back there. Oh. Uh, but around the corner, so I have, I actually have a master's degree in video game development, uh, which is a thing you can do if Whoa. you don't have money. Um, and so as part of my capstone, uh, we wrote a game called Tech Support Zombies. So it was a team effort. So I'm debating, that's one of the reasons I'm debating whether to do it. And we wrote it in uh, an old framework called XNA doesn't exist anymore. There's a port of it called Mono Game. Doesn't exist in Rust. Anyway, I think I'm going to try and port it to Capture. And the way Tech Support Zombies were, or port it to Capture, port it to Godot. Starting probably, this is starting to reach its endpoint. I've got some stuff to do, but once I learn how to do CI, uh, continuous integration yeah. in this setup, right, and fix a couple things I have around testability that I haven't figured out yet, that's probably going to be when it's like, let's well, time to move on and actually do game development. Oh, okay. And the way text. So the way what text support, sorry, go ahead. So the, bef before you get into like what, what it is you want to do, I, I think I'm getting why it is that you built this this way. You're basically going through every single motion that you can and figuring out like what the range of motion is for this. How does it look like when you do this? You know? And then you're, you're creating, you're figuring out what the, what the language is, um, what the different you know, rules of this game are, and then once you understand what those rules are, then you can put them together in a way that's creative. But right now you're just trying like, okay, this is what red looks like. This is what blue looks like. This is what happens when you make a square. This is how to make a triangle. And we're going to do all of those things on this one thing, right? Essentially, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's a pretty good way of putting it. I look at basically, if when I do the next one, I'll already know, oh, this is how I make build for an iPhone. So uh, what I'm showing you right now is a version that looks like an iPhone because it's just the exact same square. Right. But I actually also build this on the iPhone. Um, and we have, Brian can vouch for this. We had to figure out how to call from uh, iPhone code back into uh, back into our uh, the Rust code. So 
um, which got working this week. So essentially, um, I, I want to make sure I take you through us, but uh, the when you build for an iPhone app, right, you have some languages that are choices. You've got Objective C, Objective C++, which is an actual thing. If right, wait, Objective you know. C++, that's the thing. Yeah, that's usually the thing. I think of C++ and Objective C as two separate. Things. So Objective C++ exists so that you can talk to C++ it's, from Objective C. Oh, it's an interop. And right. it kind of, I mean, like there's actual features to it too, but it, the best use of it is an interop. And uh, the thing is Objective C and C++ themselves were developed at the same time. They're competitors. Right, yeah. C++ just took off because Objective C was hidden under the old next step umbrella, Steve Jobs' company that he started when Apple right. fired him the first time um, before he came back. That's right. why if you've ever done any Objective-C work and you see things with the prefix like NS, like NS string, that stands for next step. Um, but Objective-C++ is like, I can borrow some both of these words and make this insane language. Um, and I needed to call into my Rust library to get essentially... So when you run on the iPhone, I, I should back up a step. So when we do this login step, Mm -hmm. So just doing the login, it, like actually authenticating with GitLab like that, that was a lot of streams <laughs> to get that working. Um, because if you've ever done OAuth on a lap on a, on a machine, because we're essentially running this on Mac, so on a on a computer, not a phone, mm -hmm. what you do is you spawn up inside your application a tiny little web server, and you make a request to. Um, you make a request to GitLab and with the URL and you say, this is the URL you're going to call back to get to me. You're going to call back into me at the very end. So your browser will redirect back to that. Um, so you give it the URL, it re you, you log in. That's why I logged in on the browser and you see this. And actually here you can see like there's a token here. And yeah, yeah. if you knew my IP address, you could do some bad things to me right now. Right. Um, Right, so you get that whole URL back. Well, that doesn't work on the phone. Um, on the phone, you have to register with a custom URL scheme and give it that. And then it's going to come back into a callback that exists in iOS code um, and is, in the case of the way Gato exports to Xcode or exports to iOS, which mm -hmm. it does, by the way, if you're interested in Gato, by the way, it's really cool. And if you've like, you saw the Unity screen stream from before, um, the short version is Gato is free, open source, probably not as powerful as Unity, mm -hmm. but it's free and open source and has a nice community around it. And frankly, I like its UI better. Um, uh, if the community is friendly, I mean, that's actually worth a ton. It's uh, a big win. Yeah, like um, if the community is like like super gatekeeper-y about it, and they're like, oh no, no, you gotta, and they're just all like, you know, doing this like, I don't know, like, I'm better than you because I know this and you don't kind of thing, right. you, <laughs> which never happens in game development. Let's <laughs> no. Oh man, like I like, I I don't do game development simply because of the fact that I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I um yeah, there's there's a few reasons I'm not still in the industry. One being that that layoff um. Right, that I that I got being right at the same time uh, as I just bought a house, uh, so like you don't get to be picky at that point. No, not this house. Several houses ago, but it's like uh, okay, it's a cute farm, but like I'm gonna get paid, right? Because uh, there's a mortgage payment coming. Right. Um, but uh, so here, I like you can export actually to a bunch of different stuff, but I'm exporting to iOS. Okay, um, you can actually export to the web. It doesn't work yet in Rust, but I'm hoping it will soon. Okay. Um, but anyway, the point of that ramble was just that I needed to be able to intercept the little hook and call into Rust code, right? I had to call my Rust library that I built, which took forever to figure out and then made me feel dumb when I figured it out because the way you call the Rust library is it's built in Xcode. So you just have to be able to create a header, which there are tools for. Um, and so it ends up being like two lines of, uh, I think I got that. Yeah, over here in the iOS app. Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 
like this is all boilerplate and then i just say logged in with all the stuff i need and that's it and that's it <laughs> um but that took like a two weeks to figure out because and this is in rust uh, right so this is objective c plus plus okay objective but c plus plus which you need to yeah. glue the rust code to the app in. right you need the objective c plus plus mostly because gato is written in c plus plus under the hood okay so you need so you have that and it, this probably looks familiar if you've ever done iOS stuff, but you're basically just getting a hook in iOS that says, oh, I'm opening a URL. Okay. Um, and then you call this logged in function, which is where I've got to pick up development tomorrow because finally I'll actually get to Rust. You'll even have syntax highlighting and everything. Um, like a real boy, because I oh, don't have- This looks like email. Rust. Yeah, so this is Rust. Okay. And so you've got this function that just says, when you build it, don't mangle it which is a C++ thing that um, is done so you don't have namespace clashing. Uh, call exter Make it available to C and call it with login. And then I just take that fragment and I convert it into a Rust code. And right now I just print the line. Because I can't finish the login bit from the iPhone yet. So once I you can have this... Finish it. But once you have this line here and it's actually printing that, it means that you can replace that print line statement with something that says, run all of my code. Right. And that's actually the challenge I'm at right now because um, the way my code works, uh, I mentioned there is, I don't know if I need this line. There is an embedded web server going on and it takes its response and sets it so the response where it needs to get that access token so every further request goes on, it sets it as a value. I need to be able to, from here, call that same code. So I need to do a bunch of refactoring to put it back together again hmm. um, in a way that doesn't break the Mac version. Because even though the Mac version is not important, it's way faster to develop on, so I want to keep it working. Because... Ultimately, I would never use the Mac version. I'm already at my Mac. I'll just type in the inbox. I'm already there. Right. <laughs> Why would I use? <laughs> Why would I go the long way? Um, can show you though because it's here. Yeah. Oh no! Don't crash now. Oh, it is on my phone, but for some reason it's crashing right now. I must have built a version that crashes. So all you can see is if I put the icons there. Where is the icon? Uh, there. Oh yeah, I see that elephant. Yeah. Um. And there's an elephant screen, but then it crashes for some reason, which I don't actually know why that is. But I haven't built it for the phone proper in a little while, so that's probably got something. Um, anyway, I don't remember where I was going to go from there at this point. I can actually talk about this stuff for a long time. Yeah, yeah, we can. Go... <laughs> we should probably, like, sort of... Uh... Let's let's talk about what we what we learned uh, today. <laughs> Besides the fact that I'm a madman. Uh, well, that's uh, requisite, uh, I think, for being a software developer. Um, and uh, unlike other professions in software development, um, practicing on your own and building your own things is considered acceptable. <laughs> and and normal. Yes. Uh, in fact, but I would only object. I was we we kind of passed over this. I would object to the idea a little bit that it's required. Um, yeah, I, uh, there, I know people who do that, and when I've been a mentor for other software developers, I have told them it's required because I want them to get into the habit of doing it. I, there's parts of your career it is going to be required, yeah. frankly, like if it's er and depending on what your goals are. But I, I really bristle when people are like, "Oh, they're just a punch clock developer. They only work forty hours a week on their job." Like, yet, so there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. <laughs> you need like balance in life. I don't just do uh, software. I do software for reasons. Um, yeah. And when I apply software, I, I do it because I can. Uh, but it also gives me some. It gives me some power. Um, but yeah, I don't spend all of my time only doing software and. Uh, that's no way to live a life unless and, like, I that's... mean, I, I think it was obvious from this, like part of the reason I do this is because it's clearly fun for me. Right. Right. And, and it, it, it obviously is. Yeah. And I tend to do more of this kind of stuff for me when oh, that's not really true right now, to be fair. I don't want to, but 
the less I get to code or do the stuff I really enjoy at work at work, which mm -hmm. I don't always get to pick from, the more right. I tend to put myself into these things. If, I mean, like if my day job right now was really, really super intense and stressful and I, if I phrase anything wrong, I'm going to make it sound like, yeah, but my okay. job's easy right now, which let, it's not. Let, but... let, 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 maybe I can, I can help with that because it sounds like a, a friend of mine who is a designer has the same issue, which is that when they're working on things that are either A, boring, or B, psychologically taxing, they don't work on other things. Yeah, I, I'm or definitely they, um, probably half of that. Or, if, I'm, if, I'm, if my day job is real, I moved you over, so I'm looking funny. I got to move your head back by my camera. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I look at the camera one. Um, yeah, if my if my day job is like really really taxing or busy, I would probably be like we're not going to stream for a while because I just don't have it in me. Right. Um, but if it's my di my day job's at a healthy place right now, whereas right, but if, if I it's was... <laughs> boring and also you're not really learning very much there, then you start doing this. Yeah, I start, I mean, I always end up with little hobbies. I'm on the computer probably too much, um, mm -hmm. more than is probably healthy. But yeah, there's definitely more of this kind of thing going on. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm frank, I mean, I know this is like, this is an app. This isn't a, um, this isn't a game, but the next one will be a game. And the previous one was a game. I made a blackjack game on the stream right before I did this one. Um, and that was actually significantly like less difficult than this one because I didn't throw all this other random, we were going to do all this other crazy stuff at it. It was just like, I'm going to try and build a blackjack game. Right. Yeah. Uh, Cardin actually says there are devs that don't have coding as a hobby in their lives and they prefer to do other things and that doesn't stop them from doing a good job. And that's, that's right. true. Yeah. Um, and you know, it depends on, on like, but the point is that we, we can, and that it is definitely something that you, that, that is an option for you. That is for sure. perhaps not as much an option if you're a pediatrician. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, maybe you shouldn't choose no. a pediatrician. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well. Uh, yeah, uh, and you know, uh, I think um, uh, doing different things actually, like just having two very different worlds that I live in. I live in an improv world and in a software world, um, and I find that going back and forth between them really teaches me a lot about the other one. Um, and yeah, it's it's a fun <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if you are a doctor, you can go and have an improv class or even learn how to code, but probably not a good idea to experiment on your subjects. <laughs> I suppose they read a lot. Yeah, they do. They probably read yeah. about experiments that are done in clinical studies and things like that. And that's kind of the same thing. It's like a safe version of doing that. I hope, I hope you're be getting like, up to date on any vaccines that might be coming out. Just oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe they are, you know, I don't know. That doesn't seem very relevant. <laughs> nah. <laughs> so, Nothing about that in the news. Yeah. Well, um, I haven't but, left my house since January. Yeah. Uh, I do have a few uh, people to thank uh, at the end of the stream. Um, so uh, my production liaison is Matt Pittner, um, and uh, he's all over this channel. He has a show called Crockpot Cinema, uh, which you can see on most Sundays, where he cooks, and also uh, they watch a, a movie of some sort. Uh, sometimes it's uh, one that's in the public domain. Sometimes they use um, uh, ones that are not in the public domain uh, using Amazon Prime subscriptions. Um, then there is Aaron Harvey. He designed the uh, logos that you're seeing in these corners. Um, and he uh, actually, he, yeah, he designed that logo. Um, and he has a show called Infinite Trek that is a Star Trek podcast that streams here on Saturdays. Um, uh, Lucas Vanasek uh, is my marketer, and he has a show called Two Liars. He's the game show host uh, for that. Um, and it's a show where two different teams of people, um, uh, there's a story, um, and out of the three of them, one of them is telling the truth about their story, and the other two are making it up on the spot. And, they, and the other team has to figure out who's telling the truth and who's lying. Um, then uh, my botmaster is Cody Bushy, who has a show called An Actor Unprepared. That's here on Monday nights. 
Um, and uh, that's a, he gets an actor, a director, and a writer together, and they put together a monologue right there on the spot uh, mm -hmm. performance. Um, uh, and uh, the music that you heard before the stream and the stream at the end uh, is by Alex Khan and Arlo Sanders, who have a show called Made Up Music, which is coming back uh, for our 13-hour uh, winter marathon that we're going to be having soon. Stay tuned for that. Uh, they make up music right here on the channel, and uh, it's pretty good stuff. 13 right? hours? Well, they're not going to be doing it for 13 hours okay. themselves. <laughs> they're going to be one show in a 13-hour lineup of ah, stuff. Ah, okay. Because, uh, like, they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do three- and four-hour shows uh, to get that song out in time, and, man, uh, it, it's, it's fun watching them, but, you know, they've been on hiatus for a while, and uh, I think it's basically to nurse their wounds and, you know, repair their fingers. Uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. probably. Yeah, just play until their fingers bleed. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's the show. Um, uh, Eric Smith, uh, also, uh, you, you have a show as well uh, that I, you do. I have a stream. Tell, I, tell us about I, it. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if I'd necessarily call it a show show in the way that this is a show. Like, sure, it's a stream. Uh, it's a stream, yeah. So on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and every once in a while a weekend, um, I stream Rust Development at it's it's seven in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays Central Time. Uh, it's seven thirty on Mondays, so that I get a little extra to sleep in. Um, Mondays I work on little practice exercises because while I'm building this app in Rust, I don't consider myself an expert or even at intermediate at this point. Um, and Tuesdays and Thursdays I work on so Mondays I work on the coding. There's a uh, site called coding game which has exercises that are semi-interactive it's a lot of fun um we had a bunch of we had uh, quite a few well for me quite a few viewers on monday so people seem to like that including the coding game twitch account itself watched um we made batman dodge some bombs or no he he defused a bomb that was it um okay. so practicing basically little algorithms and such and then on tuesdays and thursdays i work on projects like this one so the plan is current tentatively right now to finish this project and then start back into game development we did we did a uh, blackjack game um this will be an actual iphone app we'll probably i'm probably still going to work on it until it's useful until i get continuous integration going um and then after that will either be i will bring back tech support zombies uh in another form which is uh, a game I worked on for my capstone when I was back in school. Uh, you are the hired new tech support guy. Um, you support all the people at their computers at a cubicle farm. And what happened is the, the bosses have learned that they can make those developers hyper productive with super special coffee and they will not leave their computers. But if their computers break, they turn into zombies and chase you around until you get to their computer and fix it. Um, no. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm hoping... yeah, that's, that's just coding what you know, right? <laughs> They're just coding what you know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, my, my hope is actually, I think I kind of want to change it in it because we just had it push characters and I think I want to change it to be something to actually teach something. I think I want to have it actually teach Unix commands. So you got to get to the computer and actually type like the tar command correctly and or run away if, you know, comes to get you. <laughs> um, so... That might be the next thing to we'll work on. The other thing is I had been thinking about was working on a board game. Uh, specifically, there is a person who wrote a creative common set of rules for a game called Code Monkey after the song Code Monkey uh, by Jonathan Colton. Right. So I was thinking like, oh, this is creative commons. I could code that. Maybe we'll do both. And yeah. I mean, I don't do Rust at the day job right now, which means there's other stuff we may code and build. But you can, yeah, it's twitch.tv slash Peyton Rules. You can find my blog at PeytonRules.com. You can fly, find me on Twitter at Peyton Rules. You can find me on Discord, but I don't have a Discord server yet. If you head to the <laughs> Rustation Station for the Rustation Station podcast, I have a channel in there because Rust streamers do. Uh, members mm. of like the Team Rustation stream. Cool. Well, great. Uh, now uh, comes the end of the show where we have the awkward goodbye uh, in uh, in software terms. So uh, oh, I'm just going to go have ahead one and. One more thing to thank, though, before we, we let this go. Oh, oh. Just, just want to thank the puppy because oh. she did not bark or howl once during the show. Oh, my goodness. 
poses. So that's Nola. She really needs a haircut. She's been laying next to us the whole time, looking Aww. very, very cute and being a sweetheart. What an excellent animal. <laughs> or person. Ish. It sounds weird when I say animal. It makes it sound like I just don't care or something. Like <laughs> well, what she's an not excellent a creature. Either. You would never tolerate it if, you know, a person went to the window and just screamed every time the Amazon guy came. <laughs> their lungs. You'd be like, get the hell out of my house. Now, that is the premise for a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny you should mention. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, so uh, uh, now we're just going to close the stream up. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and figure out how this works. It goes something like that yeah okay i think i i got it wait did you get it i think i did yeah okay well um uh bye <laughs> bye Not a river. After the mountain, a mountain is a mountain.